which then brought me to the curious case of one Stephen S. Sushi. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Hey yo, what up world? Back with another one today, and we are eating way too much spaghetti bolognese for one human consumption. So, you know I'm already here on my BS with my pepperoncinis and sour cream. I love to add sour cream to anything pasta-y, uh, such as the lasagna that I did recently. And then my pepperoncini game is just, it, it's very strong lately. I just, I can't lie. I'm deep in the pepperons. So, uh, also underneath we got hella cheese that I melted on. And under that we have a nice copious bedding of bolognese and then we also have a nice little light tossing of the noodles in bolognese okay so excited to get into it before we do anything more we must pour coming with some different cubes today these are the freezer cubes the ones that you crack out of the 80s trays I really don't understand the 80s trays. I just buy bags of ice, which is detrimental and problematic to my budget because though it's $3 a bag, y'all know how much of an ice fiend I am. I buy lots of ice. I go through a lot of ice. I probably spend way too much money on just ice, which is like a ridiculous concept, but I hate filling up the eighties trays and I hate cracking the trays and having the ice, uh, you know, <laughs> it spills everywhere. It's all over the floor. It's zipping around. It's just, I don't even like the shape of it, to be honest. Like I'm not in love with the shape of you. Okay. So let's, have our DP. Oh yeah. From the Bolognese region. To go with this fine Italian dish that we have here today. Super authentic. Hand rolled the pasta on myself. You know what I mean? But I'm just a tacky white guy, so it's still going to taste fine. You know what I mean? It's all good. So, yeah, ice debates. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about a bunch of a couple things. I got some stuff playing on my mind today, okay? Uh, this is way too much food, but, hey, that's what this world is all about here in this muck community. So what do we do? These, these decoratives are really stressing me out because now what do I do? Do I just put them off to the side and, and, and per bite them or like what? And, oh, you're just going to roll away. Cool. N nice life. Yes. I'll per bite them just because I want to really to be able to get in here and not have them zipping around. Ooh, hoo -hoo -wee, boys. And the girls, sorry, my bad. Don't mean to be exclusive. That's looking nice. Almost don't even need this wooden spoon. Nice steamy bite for you. That's a that's some first bite love. Please don't burn my mouth. I am Wim Hof. I am Wim Hof. I'm the Iceman. Mind over matter. Okay? I respect you as a food-based source of nutrition, and I love you, and uh, I, I just really need you to cooperate. Okay. So, thank you, sir. Mm. Very cooperative bite. Super happy about how that went. Now, a couple things to touch on about this pasta real quick is this. What I'd first 
like to tell you is that spaghettini, or maybe you know, angel hair is similar, uh, is one of my top favorite noodles, pasta noodles. What is your top favorite pasta noodle? Please leave down below in the comments because I'm intrigued to know because there's so many different ones and they all kind of are, you know, different mouthfeels, different purposes. They all grab, catch and store the sauce differently. Did you even know that about pasta? That the noodles are specifically designed to catch and store and compartment the sauce, Some you know, for certain sauces and bites? The more you know. What's your favorite? I'm a spaghettini penne guy myself. But what I'm not a fan of is this. When you go to the store and you're not really thinking, you're not being observant, but you do see a box of spaghettini, but you don't heed the labeling on it. You just see spaghettini, you think, oh, that's $1.79, let me just grab it. But you don't remember that we live in a new age health conscious world where spaghetti is made out of like many different things. And then you get home only to find out that you in fact, in your haste, grabbed ancient grain, ancient grains. So this is ancient grains. I was looking for some bleached standard American white ass pasta. And then I had to get ancient grains. Tell you this it was brown as papoo when I looked at it in the box and I thought it was gonna give a really not great on-camera impression but now that I've cooked it and mixed it in it pretty much looks just normal It does though have a um, little more grainy like mouthfeel, I would say. It is killing it. I cannot lie. This is very good right now. It's cooperating with these spins, these spin moves, allowing for good big bites. Which is what the mukbang world loves to see. Aristocratic sips. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So, I could talk about ice and my 
snooty snobby ice preferences. But I won't. Because I have something else I need to touch on. Okay. I need to touch on. I was cruising through YouTube the other day and I saw this girl and she has this like 2.5 million view video in like under a week's time. And I'm like, who's this girl? How she's getting these numbers? What's this girl's deal? I must have a little look see here. <clears throat> so the title of the video is Gabby Hanna must be stopped. And I'm like, who the is Gabby Hanna? Like, I don't know these people. I don't know what's going on in this weird, dramatic YouTube world. Because I'm not that type of person. I just, I don't understand fake, dramatic controversy and all this like intentional dumb shit that people do to like run up the numbers. I get, I understand numbers and money and things like this, but like, I don't know how you live a life like that and be like proud of yourself. Uh, I also am really like disappointed in the human population and people who like give these people the attention uh, on like really dumb shit that's like so obviously intentionally set to spark brain numbing not important like just really low IQ controversy type stuff So I start watching this girl's video about this girl and how she must be stopped. And within two minutes, I feel like I've got a lobotomy. I hear the I hear the name Trish Paytas thrown around, and then I'm instantly like, "Okay, yeah, this is not my lane." But just for good measure, who is this Gabby Hanna girl? So I search her up. I'm like, oh yeah, I've seen her face around, whatever. She does all those dumb type of videos, like just those like I plucked my eyebrows for 24 hours straight. Here's what happened. It's like you ended up with no eyebrows and then you click on the video and she like didn't even pluck her eyebrows once. Just all this clickbaity dumb shit. My favorite ones are like the boyfriend and girlfriend pranks where it's like, who believes this shit? Like these, they're a couple. They live under the same roof. They both are doing a YouTube channel together. They spend every waking moment together. They probably shit side by side. And you're telling me that like you're able to prank your significant other and like it's authentic and they didn't know they didn't, weren't planning this whole prank with you so that you could get 2.5 million views and make like five grand. Come on guys. But there's people out in the world who are clicking this shit and they're running up these numbers for like fake dumb shit. And I just wish people would be more like intelligent about it. It's like, and then you read the comments and it's all these people like, trolling, hating, bitching and complaining. And like, you know, but then it's like, okay, but Y'all are the enablers. Like y'all are the ones that are really allowing these people to be successful, to make 
these hundreds of thousands of dollars and then you're going to come shit on them but you're the ones that are caught up in the in 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 the, in the in the rabbit snare of like this like dumb shit and you're you're perpetuating this idiocy and then y'all really want to get mad and have an opinion on these people meantime your hate comment or your critical comment or your click and everything is contributing to their direct success to their bank account to them fueling what they want to do or keep doing what they're doing so it's like you know what i mean it's just so it's such a futile thing and then that brought me to the to the thought of like okay when i've looked at a, like asmr or mukbang when i look at this realm we, there's a handful we all know who they are of like controversy drama based like dumb sheeple type drama in this community and those people run numbers and they're like the biggest most popular Which then brought me to the curious case of one Stephen S. Sushi. <clears throat> now, I've been trying to figure out Stephen Sushi for a while. And what I've deduced is this. Is I think... Like, Nick Akato is very obvious that he's a complete and total actor drama type guy troll who's trolling he's just trolling the internet the internet's trolling him it's a give and go Steven Sushi however does it I think I think he's trolling the internet as well I think he purposefully acts the way he does to be a meme to get controversy to get clicks to get views to make money but he does it in such a subtle, underhanded, non-suspecting way. He just kind of plays like he's dumb-ish and just way too passionate about eating. Like, like way too intense, you know what I mean? And I say this because... I watched the video of him and B Love's life when he went and visited her and they did a seafood boil together. And he was calm, respectful, actually articulate, was actually like speaking more clearly with more thought, using like bigger words. He was able to express full thoughts regarding YouTube, Mukbang, his journey, everything like that. And he was acting completely normal, like very different. Go check that video if you wanna if you want to have a look for yourself. And that right there basically confirmed to me that he may look you be like the slickest trolling genius in this space. The other advantage that he has to, which is an interesting dynamic to consider and kind of funny all at once, is that His entire family are mukbangers. His dad and mom have a channel. He has a channel. His sister has a channel. I feel like 
a lot of people wouldn't act the way that he does purely based on the fact of like just like what would my parents think of me if they saw this like you know at least that's how I think I don't want to be I don't want to like embarrass like I, just, I don't know I just I this is ugh, I would never want to come off like that to like my parents like low-key secretly watching me and being like who what the fuck did I raise <laughs> what is this thing that I raised So his advantage is that his whole family is in like the entertainment YouTube mukbang space. They basically know who he is at home off camera. And then he can just be like, oh yeah, that's my like on-person ca camera. And they see the numbers. They probably see his bag coming in and they're like, yes, Steven, keep acting the way you do. It's fine. Because they know who he really is off camera. I could be completely wrong about my speculation here, but low key, high key, I ate way more of the spaghetti than I thought I was going to, and I feel like I could still eat more, which is crazy, because that's like wild. So I usually like fill up quick when I when I'm eating spaghetti and pasta, but uh, low key, high key. I think he might be secretly like the biggest genius troll. Because there's times where I've seen him be an entirely different person. A normal, collected, thought-having human. So it's very interesting because you can approach YouTube from a few ways. One is authenticity, which is like my angle, but you know, that's not the game that wins really. Maybe long term. And maybe just in the in, in in the respect of integrity and not being a meme. But if you're playing a numbers and money game, then you have to feed the market, play the market, look at the market, see what the market wants. And it's evident evident that the market wants buffoonery. Clownery. C controversy. Memes. Lots of hate. It's very, it's very evident that that's the way of the, of the click, like, of, of, of what grabs people's attention. Like, people want to know this ridiculous shit. And people love to come and get their little jab in, you know? I feel like the more popular you are, a good portion of your audience is subscribed to you just to come read the comments and jump into like the the critical, hateful type shit. So it's interesting. It's very interesting. I myself can't play that game. It's not for me. I just enjoy food for real. I enjoy talking. I enjoy chatting. I enjoy expressing thoughts. Um... And that's it. You know, I'm not, I just can't play that fake shit. So anyhow, that was a nice, uh, nice, nice crush. I feel like I got through more of that than I thought I would. If you have any, uh, thoughts on, on this topic and everything I covered, please shoot it down below <laughs> till the next one. You know what to do. Eat good, live well, stay true.